The ongoing pandemic has brought America's dependence on China for medical supplies into the spotlight. One of the uh, things that this crisis has taught us, sir, is that we are dangerously over-dependent on a global supply chain for our medicines, like penicillin, our medical supplies, like masks, and our medical equipment, like ventilators. According to a recent congressional report, 30 percent of the U.S.'s personal protective equipment imports last year came from China. Similarly, 80 percent of the basic components used in U.S. drugs come from China and India. But 80 percent of the key ingredients for India's genetic drug manufacturers are also sourced from China. So how did we become so reliant on China? Many world leaders argue letting it into the WTO was an important turning point. Plus, the agency couldn't have done it without the U.S.'s backing. The U.S. played an indispensable role in bringing about China's WTO ac accession. And WTO accession was rocket fuel for PRC's ambitions, giving it the global market access that turned China into the world's manufacturing and export powerhouse. No policy has strengthened the PRC more. In the late 1970s, the communist regime began to loosen control of the Chinese economy, basing its legitimacy and power on economic growth. The regime was eager to expand foreign market access and join the rulemaking body for international trade. The WTO is a membership organization. To get in, China had to be accepted by all members, but most importantly, had to cut a deal with the U.S. President Carter first granted China most favored nation status in 1979, but the label had to be reviewed annually based on human rights records and other concerns. In April 1990, then-Chinese Premier Zhu Rongji took a five-day road trip through the U.S., pitching the Chinese market to corporate America. Under pressure from the business community, President Clinton started trade talks with China. The ongoing talks were derailed by the Chinese embassy bombing in Belgrade. According to a Wall Street Journal report, the White House sent California Senator Dianne Feinstein to deliver a handwritten message from President Clinton to Chinese President Jiang Zemin, urging him to resume talks. One month later, the talks resumed. Later that year, on November 15th, the two nations signed a bilateral agreement. In it, China promised to reduce tariffs and trade barriers. In return, the U.S. would support China's entry into the WTO. This removed China's biggest hurdle in becoming a member. Several months later, the China trade bill was sent to Congress. Labor unions opposed it, fearing competition from cheap Chinese labor. Rights advocates raised similar concerns and wanted the annual reviews of the country to continue. But China's membership was championed and heavily lobbied for by big businesses eyeing the 1.2 billion consumers in its market. As then U.S.-China Business Council President Robert Capp said, it would bring billions of dollars to American businesses. It was eventually passed and signed into law by President Clinton in October 2000. The move granted Beijing permanent trade relations, removed the annual review, and paved the way for China's WTO accession the next year. Clinton called it a good day for America after signing the bill. He added that in 10 years from now, we will look back on this day and be glad we did this. But 10 years later, that wasn't what had happened. Judging by the expressions of the past 10 years, I think the answer to the first question, whether China has and will keep its promises, is sadly no. The level playing field promise as part of WTO's ascension has not arrived. WTO membership has resulted in a massive ship of jobs and wealth from the United States to China, which has come again at a huge cost to us. Just in the few months following President Clinton's approval, over 80 companies announced plans to move production to China. The corporations were mostly multinational. With foreign investment and factory jobs flooding in, China's exports and economy boomed. During the same period, the U.S.'s trade deficit with China also going from $84 billion in 2000 to nearly $420 billion in 2018. World Trade Organization, which created China. China has been like a rocket ship ever since. 
With production shifted to China, jobs went there too. According to a recent study from the Economic Policy Institute, the deficit with China cost 3.7 million U.S. jobs between 2001 and 2018. That's because the imports represent products that otherwise would have been made by American workers. Also lost to China, America's own capacity to make medicine. You know, we're so dependent that uh, we can't even make antibiotics anymore in the United States. That began in the early 2000s when the United States opened up free trade with China and the last penicillin plant shut down, the last vitamin C plant shut down. And that happened because China undercut others' uh, companies on price and kept prices low for a long time. These are illegal trade practices. In a 2018 report, the U.S. Trade Representative's office said the U.S. made a mistake supporting China's entry into the WTO. Now, in the face of the pandemic and the CCP's cover-up, the U.S. is reminded again, despite its best hope, that the Chinese communist regime cannot be trusted.